Hi, I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping, and I help creative online sellers to set up, organize, and streamline their financials, whether you want DIY, done with you, or done for you financial systems. And today I'm talking to my Amazon and Shopify sellers and giving you a tour of A2X. Several of you have asked me in the comments to do a video about A2X. If you're not familiar with A2X, it is an integration tool that seamlessly brings over data from Amazon and Shopify into QuickBooks Online. And the reason that I love A2X so much is because it doesn't do a data dump into QuickBooks. It actually brings in summarized transactions into QuickBooks, which is fantastic because we don't need all that detail in QuickBooks. So I'll go ahead and show you a tour of A2X. Let's get started. I'm in the home screen in A2X. Now, if you haven't signed up for A2X, look for the link in the description box below so you can um, sign up for it. But I'll give you the tour. So we are in the home screen and we first start out with some uh, analytics, some dash uh, dashboard analytics. Next, uh, we're seeing that this A2X account is connected to Shopify and also connected to QuickBooks Online. And then we can see the payouts activity. And I'll discuss payouts in a moment. Now let's go to settings. So let's click settings. And we'll see account information. Now let's click on auto invoicing. And when you select enable auto posting payouts, A2X will automatically send transactions over to QuickBooks Online. I recommend that you turn this on once you've ensured that everything is mapped correctly and everything's coming over into QuickBooks correctly. We'll skip over product types that's more advanced. Then we'll go to invoices. And even though this says invoices, they're not really invoices, it's just sales grouping. So how do we want uh, the information to be grouped from Shopify or Amazon into your QuickBooks Online, whether you want it grouped just by all sales, sales by SKU or sales by product type. You normally would select all sales. If you're tracking sales by product type, then you would be tracking sales by categories or do a more advanced way of tracking sales. There are also additional uh, groupings, whether you want to group sales by country. So if you're an international seller, an Amazon seller selling internationally, you might want to group your sales by country or by region, province, or state. And you can also, if you're using classes in QuickBooks Online, you can also track sales by classes. And some of these settings are a bit advanced. Now let's go to history. If you're just setting up A2X and you want to get historical information to download from Amazon or Shopify, then you would click this to request more history and then A2X support will gather that information for you and put that in the payout screen for you. So this is great. If you're starting out mid-year and you want to bring in historical transactions from Amazon or Shopify, then you can request a more history. Then we have connections and we can see that again, this account is connected to QuickBooks. Then we have bank account settings and we want to make sure that we are connecting A2X to the account in QuickBooks where your Shopify or Amazon payouts are being deposited and also to connect the credit card account used to pay amounts showed to Shopify. And just to be clear, these are just the accounts that you're using in QuickBooks online. So these are coming from the chart of accounts. We're not actually connecting to the actual bank or the credit card account. And then you have other settings uh, below for of whether you're using Shopify payments or other payment gateways. And here's where uh, this is really important. How do you want the data to come over into your accounting system or into your QuickBooks? And I recommend using weekly. 
Daily is a lot of information. You don't necessarily need it. Weekly is best. Monthly, it might be too summarized in case there are issues where you might have to reconcile some things. So I recommend weekly. Next, cost of goods sold. This is an advanced feature. I'll just tell you a little bit about it. But basically, uh, in some cases, you may be able to track your cost of goods sold for the inventory that you're selling. This does require additional preparation and setup, so I won't tell you more about it, just letting you know what it is. And then we have users, billings, and notification. Now let's go to accounts and taxes. And here's where we tell A2X how we want to account for our Shopify or Amazon sales and fees. And if you have been watching my videos, you know that the information that you see in your QuickBooks is net of fees and discounts and refunds. And so we want to be able to bring over into QuickBooks all of the components of our sales and not just net sales. And what you will see then is that A2X will pick up the different transaction types, either from Amazon or Shopify. And then it will ask you to map those transaction types into your account categories in QuickBooks, where this says account, that's coming from the chart of accounts. If an account does not exist in QuickBooks, then Shopify will set it up for you and will give you that option when you're first setting that up. In this particular case, we're not doing anything with tax rate, so we're leaving that blank. And this is, again, a more advanced feature that I'm just letting you know what it is, not getting into all the details about tax rates. But you don't necessarily need to be using this, uh, the tax rates um, at this point. And this is very important to make sure that the accounts that you're using are the correct accounts because this is how the transactions will be recorded in your QuickBooks. And again, we want to make sure that this is correct. Now let's go to payouts. The payouts list all of the activity based on the frequency that you selected. So if we selected for the transactions to be summarized by week, then we will see weekly transactions showing up in the payouts. And we'll see the dollar amounts, the payment gateway, and then we'll see a status and actions. Let's talk about status. When the status is red, it means it needs attention. When it's blue, it means it's okay. Now, the ones that we want to be concerned with are accounts. And if you recall, when we looked at account and taxes, that, that was the mapping between the transaction categories or types and the accounts that we're using in QuickBooks. So as long as this is good, as long as it's blue rather, then everything's okay. If it's not, um, then you'll get some instructions on what you need to do, but you'd probably need to go to account and taxes and map additional transaction types. Then you have sent. When it's blue, it means that the transactions were sent to QuickBooks. When it's red, it means that the transactions have not been sent to QuickBooks. In this particular case, the, the functionality to send transactions automatically to QuickBooks has not been turned on. And uh, so you would manually have to send these transactions over to QuickBooks. And then we have costs and taxes. If you recall, I had said earlier that tracking cost of goods sold and tracking taxes are more of an advanced feature. You may not use these features and so if you're not using them and these are red, then it's okay. Now let's discuss actions. So you have review, send to QuickBooks, refresh, export, and delete. When you click review, you will see the details or, or really more of a summary of the transaction and actually what the journal entry will look like in QuickBooks once you send over this particular week's transactions over to QuickBooks. So we can see the description, amounts, and accounts. 
if the transaction hasn't been uh, sent over to QuickBooks, then as you can see here, it hasn't been sent to QuickBooks, then you can click and it will send it to QuickBooks. You may refresh, and I'm not sure when you will need this. I haven't come, in, uh, come across an issue where I've needed to do this, but you do have a refresh. There's also an export, and this will actually show you the details of all the transactions that are included in this dollar amount. And then you have delete. I, again, have not come across an issue where I've needed to delete a transaction, so I don't recommend that you just start deleting. If for some reason you run into problems, then you should contact A2X support. They're really great with their support, and all you have to do is just click on the bottom right to chat with tech support. That concludes my tour of A2X. I hope that you found it helpful. I'm Veronica Wasik with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. If you're looking for a trusted and reliable financial pro to help you with your e-commerce accounting, then look in the description box below to see how you can contact me and see if we might be a good fit for working together. If this content is helping you, make sure that you comment, like, share and subscribe to my channel so you can get all of my latest videos. And if there are any other topics that you'd like me to do in the future, make sure that you leave a comment below. Also check the description box below for my free resources and how you can join my Facebook community. Oh, and one last thing. I just released my latest resource and it's called The Biggest Mistakes That Creative Online Sellers Make When Hiring an Accountant. So make sure that you check it out Again, go to the description box below and look for that link.